So I hope you enjoyed those videos on conservation of angular momentum. And by the way, the bit with uh, the bit with spinning, you can just do it yourself in your own home if you happen to have maybe like a uh, a bar stool or even a, an office chair like that that can spin. If you can get yourself to spin somehow on it, just go ahead and get in the chair. Let's just say, well, let me get rid of my my spin thing above the chair here. Just sort of get in the chair. Uh, you can sit in the chair like this. And of course, just get yourself spinning and hold your arms outstretched like that. Uh, and maybe you can even hold maybe something heavy in each hand, like even just a book or maybe even not. And just do that. And then at some point, uh, pull your arms in. Just sort of pull your arms to, uh, as close as you can back to your chest or something. And you'll see yourself spin up. And then, of course, if you move them back out again, you'll slow down. So you'll be experiencing contraction of angular momentum when you do that. But that's all this big consequences of spinning. So... Does that have anything to do with their, our solar system formation? Well, yes, I think it does, and let me describe why here. So basically, let's just go back to where our solar system is right now, and what we're hypothesizing then is that um, we have a big flat thing of dust like this, which has some axis like this that it's spinning about. And as we describe, sort of all the physics is getting um, uh Put in here, we have the centrifugal force always pulling us out like that. In these areas right here, we have gravity always pulling us in like that. Now, what about the angular momentum? Well, a couple things. I think the angular momentum has to do a little bit with the shape of the galaxy, the shape of the galaxy is starting to take now. So say um, maybe at one moment the galaxy was only this big, but then later it gets to be this big. Pardon me, I didn't mean to say galaxy, I meant dust ball. I meant the dust ball. Um, is this big and maybe as it keeps spinning it gets this big but you see what's happening now is the dust ball is getting larger isn't it like this distance here is starting to grow and that growing distance here is like the outstretched arms Isn't it? It's like it's stretching arms out and so what that would tend to do to our gas it would tend to slow it a little bit down right because the arms are becoming more and more outstretched and that'll sort of slow the speed down so i don't know how important that is in the big picture of things but it's just our rate of rotation got set somehow and if the a spinning object started to expand like that just as you outstretch your arms that would definitely slow the spin down so you see this slowing effect going on because the galaxy is growing uh, i think that's important because as it starts to slow down like that a couple things can happen Okay, the centrifugal force that we've been s discussing here sort of is another formula that I'm not going not to focus on too much. But basically, if you ever wanted to calculate the centrifugal force, it would definitely be proportional to V, the spin speed, definitely proportional to that. And it would also be proportional to the distance from the axis. That's just sort of how the physics of the centrifugal force goes. And this isn't supposed to be a G. I didn't mean to say like, gravitational force this is just the centrifugal force that I'm talking about so it's proportional to the spin speed and the distance from the axis and so if I go back to this figure up here you can see then that these parts of the dust that are very far from the axis right here like the very outer ones here this is where the centrifugal force is going to be the strongest because the the R so it's proportional to the distance and these are the ones that are the farthest away and so in these regions right here, the centrifugal force is definitely going to be the strongest. And when I say, yeah, distance from the axis, so I did write it all in here, distance from the axis. So if I go back up here again, you can see that this, this orange line that I'm drawn here is the distance of these areas of the dust particles from the axis right there. So they're going to have the strongest centrifugal force. But it's going to be slowing. And so as it slows, the velocity that it's spinning is going to start decreasing a bit because of conservation of angular momentum. And so as it decreases the centrifugal force will just sort of begin to stabilize. And let me just draw one more picture for you here because the, the flattening and the spreading can't go on forever. So let me just try and get my our galaxy, or excuse me, excuse me, our solar system back to what we think about looks like now, maybe something like this. Here's that axis that it's rotating about, something like that. And once again, the forces, the physics are still acting on it here. We have gravity on both sides. And I think we were drawing the centrifugal force in green, I think, is always wanting to pull it out. But of course, the centrifugal force, I'll put, is weakening as it expands. 
because the arms of our solar system are getting more stretched out, just like the ice skater and the TV personality there. But then, of course, don't forget that gravity is always a player, even in these regions right here. So what will happen at some point is as the centrifugal force starts to stabilize, remember, gravity is always going to be pulling in, so there's going to be gravity this way and gravity this way. And at some point, yes, maybe some of you are seeing it here, at some point in these regions right here, an equilibrium is going to reach. And that will sort of uh, stop, stop the spread. It will stop the spread of our solar system. It won't, it won't keep getting um, longer in this direction here because the gravity and centrifugal force are going to start to balance. The spin is going to stabilize. But we'll still get this gravitational pull here near the axis that's sort of going in this way and going in this way. And these regions right here, by the way, aren't affected so much by the centrifugal force. So these things here are going to be largely centrifugal force free. Are they spinning? Yes, but remember the law of the centrifugal force that is sort of proportional to that distance from the axis right here, proportional to the distance from the axis. And so these areas of the dust right here are very, very close to the axis here. very close to the axis. So the centrifugal force in this region here is going to be really sort of zero or very, very small. So there isn't going to be any any sort of lateral pushing or pulling in these regions right here, but we just will get the, gr the, the gravity pulling these sections of the dust towards themselves. Okay, that'll be a big consequence in a minute. So I want to leave you with one more thing now. Try to remember this concept of angular momentum because there is a sort of a more higher level description of why something spinning would get flat. Okay, so I hope that you're sort of convinced of my description here. We have gravity and the centrifugal force sort of neutralizing one another out in these wings here. Uh, very small influence of centrifugal force near the axis because the force is so small, but gravity is still pulling inwards. And I'm claiming that the inwards pinch here and the stabilization out here is what would give us our flatness. But um, Take a look at this next video here, which sort of describes how a spinning blob of dust can get flat with some ideas of angular momentum tossed in. So take a look. It's a very well done video.